Outlaw Law is brought to you by Whitaker and Hamer, attorneys and counselors at law. Your law firm for life. Welcome back into the Outlaw Lawyers. Josh Whitaker and Joe Hamer, your hosts. They are the managing partners at Whitaker and Hamer Law Firm, the power behind the program. They are practicing attorneys here in North Carolina. Offices located in Raleigh, Garner, Clayton, Goldsboro, Fuquay, Verena, and Gastonia. And if you've got a legal situation you're facing and you've got questions, I have a phone number for you, 800 800- 659-1186. That's 800-659-1186. Leave your contact information, briefly what the call's about, and an attorney will be in touch. And you can email your questions to the show, questions at theoutlawlawyer.com. We'll answer those on future broadcasts. Second Amendment, gentlemen. Uh, Morgan, so, you know, anytime you're talking about gun laws, uh, to get to the present of, of where we're at now, you got to always start in the beginning. And, of course, um, we had a show a couple of weeks ago where we talked about uh, abortion as a as an implied constitutional right. And again, we talked about how in the Constitution, you know, we have enumerated uh, rights, and abortion's not one of them. Uh, the 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 court, uh, the Supreme Court, over years uh, read in a bunch of privacy rights, like implied rights. Like we sh- we think the Constitution should protect this, and we think that would would have been their intent. And we talked about how the Constitution is a uh, you know, some people interpret it as a breathing, living document that changes as the times change. And, and that's kind of, you know, when we talk about the Supreme Court leak and abortion uh, maybe being overruled as a, as a constitutional right. The big thing to think about, because I've seen some people juxtapose what's going on in the abortion debate with what's going on in the in, in gun laws. I've seen that a couple of times already. Um, but abortion is not an enumerated right in the constitution it was an implied right the court found now when you talk about gun rights you're going back to the second amendment and the second amendment is uh is pretty short and sweet and i'll i'll read it because it won't take very long the second amendment of the u.s constitution reads a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed and and that's it that's that's the Second Amendment. So all our all our gun debates, uh, gun law debates, uh, all go back to, to that Second Amendment. And I, I've never thought the Second Amendment was very confusing. I think it's pretty uh, clear uh, that the founding fathers, the the drafters of the Constitution, uh, it's very clear how they felt about everyone's right to own a firearm. And Joe, I know we've talked about this before, a time or two, but. Uh, uh, always been pretty clear to me that that's that's kind of where we're starting from. Yeah, it's 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 strange, man. You think about these you think about these amendments to the Constitution, and especially the, the Second Amendment that that we're talking about here. And like you said, you've got you've got one sentence, uh, not even a super lengthy sentence at that. And from that that one short statement, you get all of this debate, you get all of this conflict, you get all of these varying opinions. Um, and it's just, it's just kind of nuts to think about that and, and everything, you know, how all of this kind of flows from this, just when you boil it down, like you said, it's a, it's a very, it's a straightforward and it's a very simple statement that, that like you said, the intent and, and, and what the, the founders when drafting this statement had in mind, I think I agree with you, Josh. It seems abundantly clear. But, but as we move through history, as society changes, as you have uh, the, the evolution of our society, you, you know, you see changes to the way that this is, and you, you see clarifications, you see cases that come out and interpret it differently, and you just, uh, it, it just, it kind of blows your mind thinking about how much you know, interpretation there has been and how much debate there has been over something that is, you know, so such a short statement that, like you said, is just a very, it has a very clear intent. And Joe, I would, uh, you know, I would add, again, I think, I think that amendment reads pretty clear, but the right of the people to keep and bear arms and arms, you know, what does that mean? You know, uh, rights can be regulated, right? Or we have uh, the first amendment, it's the right to free speech, and that's limited, you know, you, that's regulated. You can't, you know, there's dangerous speech. You can't, you know, shout in theater. Either, you know, there's things you can't do. And so that always ends up being the argument. Well, this is an unlimited arms, right? You can't own a nuclear weapon, right? You shouldn't be building bombs in your 
your house, that's a danger uh, to everyone around you. And so there's, you know, the court, all the, the court regulates this right when cases come before the Supreme Court and different states regulate firearms different ways. And we've talked about the New York case. Um, uh, we've got people who are alleging in New York possible to get a concealed uh, concealed carry permit to, to carry a firearm uh, concealed. And that's before the Supreme Court this uh, session. That's already been argued, I think. And uh, we're just waiting on an opinion. But, uh, you know, concealed weapons, every state treats that different. I mean, there's ways to regulate it. I think the stalled uh, Senate bill that um, Steve was talking about on that clip is uh, about, you know, longer wait times, you know, universal um background checks and uh you know things that seem reasonable right it's always a slippery slope when you're talking about limiting uh, regulating a right and and so people are always concerned this is you know once you start going down that hill uh, you'll keep on going and obviously you know the intent of this second amendment is is you know that law-abiding people who 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 are able should be able to own firearms unless there's a reason they can't. Right. And so, you know, everybody's going to point to the stalled Senate legislation and say, you know, uh, I think in that clip, uh, Steve was blaming. I mean, he said the 50 senators, but I'm assuming he's talking about I, the way I took it. He's talking about the 50 Republican senators who, you know, wouldn't support the legislation. Um, but that legislation, would that have stopped? Maybe it'll stop something in the future, right? But I don't know. Uh, you know, I was looking at this this situation, this shooter. Um, you know, he was 18. I had read, and I haven't had a chance to follow up, so I don't know if this is even true. Uh, but I had read that Texas had recently reduced the, the age where you could buy certain weapons. I don't know if that's true. I probably should have given it a Google. Um, age limits on certain things, That's that's something people could look at that's not you know, too intrusive to the right, you know, maybe, maybe an 18 year old shouldn't be able to legally buy multiple AR 15s, you know, maybe that's something that we, we should look at, but, um, there's a lots of, there's lots of ways you can regulate uh, a right, you know, for a long time, you couldn't buy automatic or semi-automatic weapons in certain States under certain laws. And so there's always been regulation. Um, I know our Congress right now isn't, uh, known for for getting things done uh but it seems like maybe some limited regulation is is maybe is maybe in order uh, but i guess that's up for debate it depends on what side you fall on yeah and that's the thing man you know there there's i think one of the issues we see is you got a lot of folks who just have distrust of our government you know regardless of of which side of the coin you know whether it's the a republican or a democrat that's that's going to be in office. You, you're going to have folks on the other side that are going to distrust that person, you know, sometimes solely based on just the, the, the name, you know, the fact that they are a Republican or a Democrat. And through that distrust, you, you see folks who are going to be wildly resistant to any kind of regulation, especially if something like this that people hold to be so important. You know, there's people who this is the most important thing in the world to them, you know, um, and and it's like you said, Josh. You know, we you got to kind of look at it at, in from the perspective of what would have actually prevented this. Would you know? Would this bill that you know Steve Kerr is talking about have have been able to prevent this? Um, but it, I, I think it's more of I think you know regulation is one piece of that. And like you said, any there any right can be regulated in a reasonable manner. And you know we as a society have a vested interest in a lot of these rights being regulated to an extent. And now you never want to see overreach of that or abuse. But you know we we shouldn't we should question regulation, but we shouldn't be you know completely you know diametrically opposed to any kind of regulation whatsoever because there's regulations that are definitely in the interest of the greater good and and the public welfare. Uh, but I think it's more than just regulation. You know, I think there this is a multifaceted issue. And, you know, background checks may not have prevented a lot of these things from occurring. You know, there's other pieces of, of the puzzle. And I don't have the answers. Don't get me wrong. I do not have I, have I do not have the solution. But I think it's a multifaceted solution that that goes beyond just simple legislation to to kind of start really curbing. Well, you know, Joe, I always get uh, put off. Uh, I get really put off with like people who are like far, far 
far right, you know, we don't need to, we don't need to do anything. We need to do less, you know, and then the people on the far, far left who are like repeal the second amendment, right? Because ne- neither one of those is, 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 is really the way to go. Uh, I don't think in America anytime soon, not in my appealing the second amendment. And I wouldn't advocate for that either. I don't think that, I don't think that's the way, I don't think that's the way to go. Um, but I think when people can take a tragedy like this and, and reasonable people can sit down, I mean, there's reasonable small scale things that can be done to start to take steps um, to kind of prevent this. But, you know, I, I always go back to, you know, I, I can't remember who I was hearing say this, but, you know, what he did is is illegal. Right. I mean, it's a murder is illegal, you know, and, and you know, you try to deter crime, you make it illegal. Um but it's 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 always weird for me to think about what else do you have to do to prevent crime, right? It's already illegal, right? Uh, you know, it, you have to take the step to prevent, you know, uh, things happening. But but anyway, I know I know we're up against the break, and we won't spend the whole show talking about uh, the second. I figured like we need to spend at least some time. So we're probably going to move on to some new topics after the break. Maybe that aren't quite as, quite as heavy. Um, but it doesn't mean the, the tragedy is any less, less important. Uh, but we do have some other things to talk about today, Morgan. Yep. The outlaw lawyers, Josh Whitaker and Joe Hamer. You can find them at Whitaker and Hamer law firm. They're the managing partners there. They're practicing attorneys here in North Carolina, and they host this radio show. They've got offices in Raleigh, Garner, Clayton, Goldsboro, Fuquay, Verena, and Gastonia. If you are facing a legal situation and you've got questions, I've got a phone number for you. It's 800 800- 659-1186. That's 800-659-1186. Leave your contact information briefly what the call is about, and an attorney with Whitaker and Hamer will be in touch. And you can always email your question to the show. We'll answer it on a future program, and that's questions at theoutlawlawyer.com. Again, questions at theoutlawlawyer.com. And check out the website, theoutlawlawyer.com. We're back with more right after this. <laughs> 